Hey guys, real quick, today we're gonna to talk about the bureaucracy. The executive branch has the bureaucracy. It's basically everything that causes issues. Couple of reminders, missing work, get it into me. Our presidential election campaign debate is tomorrow. Make sure that you are ready. We have four weeks of school left. Not that we're counting down, but I know some of us need to graduate. So let's make sure it happens. If you have makeup work or presentations, come see me at lunch, doors always open. All right, but real quick, we have three branches in our government. This is a quick refresher. Our legislative branch is Congress, right? They make the laws. That's the big thing that they do. Our judicial branch is the next branch. That'll be the last unit we cover this school year, and that's made up of our court system, all right? And, and then not to be forgotten is our executive branch, what we're working on right now, and that's made up of the presidency the president and the bureaucracy. So as we take a look at what the bureaucracy is, it's made up of bureaucrats. That doesn't help. It's made up of civil servants, all right? So that's what we see when we see that, is we're seeing our civil servants being part of this, people that work for the government. That is their job. Their job is to, their job is to make sure that things are getting done. These people work in many different agencies that are overseen by the president and the executive branch. So that's really what they kind of focus on. All right. In the constitution, it says that he, the president, now, you know, depending on the election of 2016, they may have to amend that to say she, depending on who wins. Uh, as you know, there are two women in the race right now. All right. So he, the president may require the opinion and writing of the principal officer in each of the executive departments upon any subject relating to the duties of their respective offices. Basically, what it means is that the president is allowed to set up a cabinet, and George Washington did just that. All right, so he had cabinet department heads that advised them on special affairs. Alexander Hamilton was part of the cabinet for the treasury. You know, some Thomas Jefferson, you saw other people in there, right? They met in small rooms around the executive office, and those rooms were called cabinets, which is where the name comes from, right? The Constitution allows for the creation of these agencies to do specific tasks and commissions that regulate certain items, so forth and so on. It's all there in our Constitution. It has been precedent in our country since 1789, and it will continue to be precedent after the election of 2016, I guarantee it, all right? So let's take a look at each of the departments. In the departments, we see the Department of State, that is our first one, it is headed by the Secretary of State that is in charge of all foreign policies made up of ambassadors around the world and represents us at the United Nations. Next, we see the Department of Treasury. The Department of Treasury is in, is, is in charge of managing all of our money. All right, this includes the Mint and the Printing and Engraving Bureau that make our money. They make money. It also includes the Internal Revenue Service. One thing that does not happen, they do not set budgets. That is Congress's responsibility. It is a check and balance in our Constitution that Congress sets the budget. The Treasury just decides how to print the money to pay for things. All right. Next, we see the Department of the Interior. It's in charge of protecting our public lands and natural resources. It also oversees the relations of the United States and the sovereign domestic tribes within the United States that make up that thing. I talked about the casino going in in South Bend potentially. It's all going through the Department of the Interior and the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Next, we see the National Park Service as part of this Department of the Interior. They protect public lands that way. Indiana Dunes is a fantastic example just to our east. All right, so we see the Department of Interior. After that, we go to the Department of Agriculture. It is helping farmers improve crops, increase profits, and expand their markets. It's often abbreviated as the USDA. Maybe you've seen Choice Meat at the market. USDA approved, that's where it comes from. Provides credit and services to all farmers. All right, and that's basically what it does. Make sure that farmers can get loans to continue to provide the food for our country that we need. The Department of Justice is the one that's in charge of enforcing the laws and the punishments of different things. It's made up of agencies that you may have heard of, like the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the Drug Enforcement and Administration, and the Immigration and Naturalization Services. All right, what they do is they decide how to enforce the laws. So one thing that Eric Holder did when he was the, the Attorney General of the United States is he decided not to defend the Defense of Marriage Act, which sort of kind of opened up potentially having uh, homosexual marriage in our country um, across the board. But basically what you see with this is you see that. All right, the Department of Commerce protects industrial and commercial segments of our American economy. The Patent and Trademark Office grants you a natural monopoly on any product that you create, encourage you to invent and make new products so that these products exist. 
all right? That's one thing in the National Institute of Standards and Technology. They've set standards for certain things. If we're gonna sell a nut and bolt in our country, it's gotta fit other nut and bolts in our country, and it all goes through that, all right? Up next, we see the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor is in charge of protecting American workers in safe working conditions. The Bureau of Labor and Statistics put out the occupational outlook, letting high school students know what the job market should look like in a few years. And we also see OSHA, the Occupational Health and Safety Administration, as part of this department as well. Next up, we see the Department of Defense in charge of protecting American citizens by overseeing the armed forces of the United States. The Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force are all part of that. This department has been seeing a sizable cutback following the end of the Cold War, but it is still one of the largest funded departments in our country, all right? And it is overseen um, by a civilian, who is the Secretary of Defense, but also by the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the Military Services. Up next, we see the Department of Health and Human Services in charge of meeting the health and social needs of the American people, it manages things like Medicaid, Medicare, and the Social Security Agency. Next, the Department of Housing and Urban Development in charge of protecting American communities, ensuring equal opportunity, uh, equal housing opportunities for all Americans oversees the Government National Mortgage Association. All right, so they, they do a lot of things with uh, making sure that housing is fair and making sure that our cities are developing. Next, the Department of Transportation. What we see is we see it regulate all aspects of our transportation needs of the American citizens from highway planning, railroads, and air service. Um, boat regulations, all of these different things happen under the Department of Transportation, commonly abbreviated as the DOT or DOT. Next up, we see the Department of Energy. They're in charge of making sure that Americans have the energy available to them that they need. It includes the Federal Energy Regulation Commission that controls interstate prices of oil and gas as it crosses state lines. It becomes a federal issue. Next, we have the Department of Education, making sure that we have the informed citizens needed to continue our fabulous democracy. What we see there is we see our, our, our coordination of federal assistance programs for things like school lunches. Uh, our snack time is federally funded, and you see different programs within schools like reading intervention programs being funded by our Department of Education. You also see uh, the adoption of national standards like the Common Core. Uh, and laws like No Child Left Behind as part of our Department of Education. The Department of Veteran Affairs all right, is in charge of helping veterans after returning from war or retiring from the military by running hospitals and educational programs for these people. Next up, the last one, the most recently created one, is the Department of Homeland Security that came into effect after September 11th, 2001, in that they are in charge of protecting the United States from terrorism and other threats, both domestic and abroad. It includes things like our Border Patrol, our Custom uh, Service, and our Federal Emergency Management Agency. All of these things are part of our federal bureaucracy. All right. That's it. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Take care.